Welcome to the second video in part two of a series on how to build a selectable latching relay circuit. In this video we're going to do a brief review of how to build a latching relay circuit. If you haven't already done so, you may want to check out the previous videos in this series so that you know what's going on in this one. As well as if you haven't already done so or you're unfamiliar with the idea of how to build a latching relay circuit, there's a video on my channel about how to build a latching relay circuit that goes into a lot greater detail what we're about to do very quickly. In this case, we're going to use a double pole double throw relay that so it looks like this one. It has six upper pins and there will be a space and there will be two lower pins so the viewers can see. And the internal structure of that relay looks like this. In my previous video on how to build a selectable latching relay circuit, I used a double pole double throw relay that has an internal layout like this. Either sort of relay will work for this circuit. You just have to pay attention to which pins are associated with the common poles, the normally open contacts, and the normally closed contacts. Just pay attention to your internal layout and you should still be able to build a latching relay circuit. And as long as you are familiar with the idea of a latching relay circuit, you can normally build one regardless of the internal layout. You just have to figure out which pins are connected to the flippers and which pins are connected to the normally closed and the normally open contacts. In this case, with our relay, the first thing we need to do to connect one side of the coil to our power supply needs to go to VCC. We don't know how we're going to get to VCC yet, but we know that we can expect to eventually have this side of the relay with a continuous path to VCC. The next thing we need to do is to be able just to switch the relay on and off, on demand. In order to do that, we would typically we run a wire and add in a normally open momentary button come off of that button and go to grind. And if we have this in the ground rail and this in VCC, we can push this button down. The flippers will move from the normally closed poles to the normally open poles, creating continuity between the common poles and the normally open poles. In its non-energized state, there's continuity between the common poles and the normally closed poles. That's their resting state in the context of relay with this internal layout. Flippers are like this. When you energize the coil, they go like that. This would give us the ability to push a button, energize the coil, flip the contacts, release the button, and the contacts go back to their relaxed state. But what about if we want it to latch and stay on? The first thing we'd need to do is to create an alternative path for current from VCC to flow through and keep the relays coil energized even after we release the momentary button. To do that, it's pretty simple. We need two wires. The first wire can come from the common pole and go to one side of our normally open button. From the normally open pole of the relay, we need a second wire going to the other side of our button. And let's think about that. How would this affect the circuit? When we push the button, current flows across the coal, energizing the coal. As it energizes the coal, it flips the movable contacts, or the flippers, flip to the inside, creating continuity between the common pole and the normally open pole. Basically, the flippers go in. So now we have two new paths. In this case, this would be the side the load is connected to, but what we're concerned about is that now that this contact is, contact is flipped, current can flow through VCC, or flow from VCC, in terms of conventional current at least, energize the coil, and instead of we've released our momentary button, we've pushed it once to energize the coil initially, that flips the contacts, then we've released the momentary button, so current can't go this way, but it can go through this wire, across the flipper, up through the pole, down through this wire, back to ground, keeping the circuit latched on. That's how we make a latching relay circuit that once we push that momentary button, it latches on and it stays on until the connection to ground has been broken. Well, how do we do that? Simple enough. 
all we need to do is add in at this point a normally closed button onto ground such that a normally closed button there's continuity across its poles until it is pressed. Pressing it breaks the continuity across these poles. We would have a basic latching relay circuit in this configuration. We can push the button that energizes the coil, flips the movable switch on the end of the common pole, flips it to the normally open position. That enables current to keep the coal energized via running through these extra wires we just added, keeping the circuit latched on. Then to unlatch it, we just push that normally closed button, push it down. That breaks connection. These contacts move from being flipped in to flipped out, and the relay circuit's unlatched. You could test this for just to make sure. And all you need to do is add some load. Say, for example, add in an LED for the resistor to a VCC, and then connect a ground line to the common pole. When you push the button, your LED should come on and stay on. When you push this momentary button, when you push this one, the LED should go off and stay off. Now, it's a brief review of how to build a latching relay circuit. In the next video, we need to figure out what to do with these buttons. We're going to replace them with a particular type of transistor. And the reason for that is that we'll need to be able to control multiple of these latching relay circuits with, with a lesser number of momentary buttons. If we did it this way, which we could, we would end up having three normally open buttons, one for each latching relay circuit, and three normally closed buttons for each latching relay circuit. And already that's six buttons, but we want to control three latching relay circuits with just three momentary buttons and a fourth master reset. But... In the next video, we'll get into how to replace these momentary buttons with a particular type of transistor.